Hi. What I thought I'd do for this video would be look to look at Mozart's Sonata in B flat major, K281, the first movement, and go through certain bars and, and read all the relevant information from what I've covered so far in box Versuch über die Wahre Art das Klavier zu spielen. So that will be from the chapters on trills, on appoggiaturas, and on ornaments in general. So it'd be like a, a master class by Bach on Mozart's, the first movement of Mozart's Sonata in B flat major. And I figured in doing so, it'll serve a, a few purposes. On the one hand, it'll, it, it could, can be a, like a, a nice kind of recap over what's been covered so far. On the other hand, it can show how box book can be used in, to better understand Mozart's score and to how it can be used in forming your own interpretation of the piece. And when I present each bit of relevant information, when I get to it, when, I, when it's a paragraph that I haven't read in this video, I'll read the whole paragraph. And then afterwards, whenever I return, I'll just read the extract. But the whole paragraph might not, it might just be some of the paragraph that's relevant, but I'll read the whole paragraph because honestly, I don't feel comfortable you know, chopping it up. I mean, and, I, and I figure it's no harm if you're interested to hear the whole, or to read the whole power, hear it and read it, the whole paragraph again, because why not? Such information, you know, you can never hear it or read it too often. And with, with, with many of the bars that I, I, I look at, what, what, what you'll be getting is uh, information where the, the combination of all that information will influence your decision on what the correct answer is. And it will, it will work like a, you know, like in a d debate where there'll be two people with two different arguments and each will present support for their argument or for their stance they'll they'll present arguments and generally it'll be the one with the most arguments in favor of their stance and the most the more convincing arguments they'll win the debate and so this can be done too it can it can add to the pro or con list of the option and then you can um, compare it to the to the arguments in favor of another option, let's say if the appoggiatura should be short or long. Those who are playing it long, they can present their arguments. And when you have the arguments as to why it should be short, you can see which, who, which version has the better, the more and the better arguments. And I, in, in my previous videos, I have gone through all the chapters in detail. So if you'd wanna, kind of hear more about any chapters that I've covered, you'll find them in my, in the corresponding videos on my channel. And at the end of the video, at the end of this masterclass, I'll be letting, if you're interested in the Prowl Trill scam, I'll be letting Bach have the final say with regard to that. So I would say that would be worth checking out if you're interested. And some of what I write, what I read out will not necessarily be a part of determining what the answer is as to how it should be played, but it will be showing just how, like how what Box says is relevant to Mozart's music.
and just as for food for thought, if, if you're, in terms of, let's say an interpretation is, ag agrees or is conform with everything Bach says that I present here, how that would be compared to an interpretation where nothing is conform or where everything is opposing or di diverging from what Bach says or doing the opposite to what Bach says is done. You can wonder which interpretation will be closer to how Mozart himself will have played his sonata. And I would say this before I start, that as well you could remember that Mozart met Bach and when he met him, Mozart said to Bach, you are the father, we are the children. Anybody who knows anything at all about music knows it because of you. And anybody who doesn't admit this is a bleep. So Mozart has had his, his opinion of anybody who didn't admit that what they know of music that they can owe it to Bach, to Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. And so he himself admitted it there that anything he knew at all about music, he knows because of Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. And if you n were to know everything Bach has said in his two, in the two books of that, the the Versuch über die Wahrheit das Klavier zu spielen comprises two books and if you were, if you know everything Bach said in those two books, and if you were to go through Mozart's sonatas, let's say, you would see that Mozart is com in complete agreement with everything Bach says. There is not a single discrepancy with between what Mozart does and what Bach says. And eventually, it will get to the point where Bach will be explaining, there won't be a, a single note or situation in Mozart's sonatas that won't be, ex be explained by Bach. And you can see, even though it's just a fraction of, of what there is to know, how in-depth this masterclass from Bach will be. And he'll be saying things that um, the role of honor that Lilliput have don't even know exist. Not, never mind not, uh, not being able to say them or not having said them or getting them wrong, but they don't even know of their existence. So that is just how profound the insight is that Bach is sharing. Hmm. So this is the first movement of Mozart's B-flat major sonata, K281.
So I look at bar one, and this is paragraph 15 from the chapter on trills. Der ordentliche Triller hat eigentlich das Zeichen eines Zackens, Figur 23 a. Bei langen Noten wird dies Zeichen verlängert, b. Die Ausübung ist bei c zu sehen. Er nimmt allezeit seinen Anfang von der Sekunde über den Ton. Folglich ist die Art, ihn durch ein vorstehendes Nötchen anzudeuten, die, wenn dies Nötchen nicht wie ein Vorschlag gehalten werden soll, überflüssig. So, the trill begins on the, and the second above the tone. So in the case of this first figure in Mozart Sonata, the second above the tone the, of the B-flat is the C, and that's the second note of the scale of B-flat. And so the first note that one plays of that trill in bar one, according to Bach, will be the C. And this will as well go for the regular trills in, for, this is relevant for all regular trills or ordentliche trillers. And that as well can be seen in bar 33, 45, 60, and 102. one can do if one is interested is based on what, what, what you learn here you can look at, at the roll of honor and out of interest see how many things they do that go 
that op in opposition to what Bach says, where I, they do the opposite of what Bach says. And you can see how many people begin that trill and those on the roll of honor. How many get the very first note of the first bar in Mozart's Sonata incorrect. And they have two choices, a B flat or a C, and they get it 180 degrees wrong, meaning they play the B flat as the first note instead of the C. So here's paragraph six from the chapter on trills. Zu weilen werden zwei Nötigen noch zuletzt von unten auf angehängt, welche der Nachschlag heißen und den Triller noch lebhafter machen. Figur 24a. Dieser Nachschlag wird manchmal ausgeschrieben. B. Auch durch einige Veränderung des ordentlichen Zeichens angedeutet. C. Jedoch da ein langer Mordend beinahe dasselbe Zeichen hat, so halte ich für besser, um keine Verwirrung anzurichten, dass man es bei dem Zacken lässt. So this is for um, future consideration that I read this now. And I just want to say quickly that what Bach says at the end about the the when the 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 the, the, the zigzag sign it has got the the line through it at the end, that since it can be confused with a long mordant, it's better just to leave it with the zigzag without the line, that addition shot frequently has mistaken the long mordant for the trill with the nockschlag and has written in a trill with a nockschlag where Bach will have wanted a long mordant and if they were would have read this and, and heeded that, they would know that Bach would not indicate the trill with the nockschlag on the line since he states there that he rather leaves it with the zigzag without the line. So here's paragraph 14 from the chapter on trills. Punktierte Noten, worauf eine Kürze im Hinaufgehen folgt, leiden auch Triller mit dem Nachschlage E. Anstatt, dass sonst die letzte Note von dem Nachschlage allezeit in der größten Geschwindigkeit mit der folgenden verbunden wird, F, so geschieht dieses bei punktierten Noten nicht, weil ein ganz kleiner Raum zwischen der letzten Note des Nachschlags und der folgenden bleiben muss, G. Dieser Raum muss nur so viel betragen, dass man kaum hören kann, dass der Nachschlag und die folgende Note zwei abgesonderte Dinge sind. Da dieser Raum mit der Zeitmasse ein Verhältnis hat, so ist die bei G befindliche Ausführung, also die Schwänzung der letzten Note des Nachschlags diesen Raum andeutet, nur so ungefähr abgebildet. Es rührt dieses von dem Vortrage der punktierten Noten, wovon in den letzten Hauptstücke gehandelt werden wird, her. Vermöge dessen, die auf die Punkte folgenden Kürzen, alle Zeit kürzer als die Schreibart erfordert, abgefertigt werden. Die bei H befindliche Verbindung des Nachschlags mit der folgenden Note ist also falsch. Es muss ein Komponist, wenn er diese Art von Ausführung verlangt, solches ausdrücklich andeuten. So, what we have here, so Bach says, dotted notes where a, sh a short ascending note follows suffer as well a trill with the nockschlag or the turn at the end of the trill or the after stroke. 
and here in bar one you can see the B flat is a dotted note and afterwards is a short ascending note following the C. And this as well, one can consider that in, in, with regard to bars 5, 45, 70 and 74. And this is paragraph 16 from the chapter on trills. Die Triller ohne Nachschlag lieben eine heruntergehende Folge, Figur 28 a, und kommen überhaupt über kurze Noten vor, b. Wenn viele Triller hintereinander gehen, c. Wenn eine oder mehrere kurze Noten drauf folgen, welche die Stelle des Nachschlags vertreten können, d. So bleibt der letztere Elkweg. In diesem Falle muss die Zeitmaß bei dem mit Stern markierten Exempel nicht die langsamste sein. Die Triolen verschont man ebenfalls mit dem Nachschläge E. Bei der letzten bleibt er alle Zeit weg. Bei den ersten dreien hingegen kann er allenfalls nur allein bei sehr langsamen Tempo angebracht werden. So, that example marked with the asterisk or the star, Bach says that can't be the slowest and if you see that example and compare it to the first figure of the Mozart Sonata, you can see it's practically identical. There's The only difference is that the the B in the example is a B natural and the B in Mozart Sonata is a B flat. Otherwise it's a, a, a identical. So Bach says here, so a trill without a nachschlag where a, the short notes following could take the place of a nachschlag. Bach says in the case of this example, the, the, the tempo can't be the slowest. And what is, relative, what is relevant about the slow tempo is the length of the, the, the tempo, is how that tempo reflects or influences the length of the note over which the trill is placed. And so you might look at this sonata and think, well, a, a dotted eight note or a dotted quaver in allegro is not the slowest or the, the longest note. So I can play a trill without where those two notes following can take the place of the nachschlag. But I would say if you consider the, 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 the tempo marking like Allegro here lively, it will be determined from the shortest or the fastest note in that movement. And here the shortest or fastest notes are 30 second notes or demi semi quavers. And if one, if you were to change that to four four time, well then the the smallest, the shortest or fastest notes in that movement would be sixteenth notes or semi quavers, and that oh so that opening figure would not be a dotted quaver 
or eight note it would be a dotted crotchet and that opening figure would take up the space of a minimum or a half note and a, and a half note in allegro is a long note and that could be seen like in Beethoven's Das Lebewohl sonata or Le Adieu Beethoven has in the first movement Beethoven has those minims or half notes coming in in the allegro and they are slow notes they are long notes and this opening figure this opening B flat is a long note or a slow note and Bach says with an, with an example like that that it can't be too long it rather has to be a short note and so you might think after you know looking at the the paragraph about the nockschlag or the afterstroke where it's written out and then in paragraph 14 where he says about the dotted note you might say well they're not the same you know the dotted note is the dotted note and and the one note following whereas this figure looks different in the opening of Mozart's Sonata and it rather looks like how it looked when Bach said sometimes the Nachschlag will be written out. It rather looked like that. So why should I be playing a, a, an afterstroke or a Nachschlag after that trill before those two notes continuing? when you know there's nothing there to say I should be and so this is paragraph 13 from the chapter on trills der triller über einer note welche etwas lang ist sie mag hinauf oder heruntergehen hat alle zeit einen nachschlag wenn nach der note mit dem triller ein sprung folgt figur 27 a so findet der Nachschlag auch statt. Wenn die Noten kurz sind, so leidet ihn eine drauf folgende steigende Sekunde alle Zeit eher B als eine fallende C. Da bei ganz langsamer Zeitmaß folgende Arten Noten D einen Nachschlag vertragen, ungeacht die geschwinde Folge nach den Punkten die Stelle eines Nachschlags vertreten könnte, so sieht man hieraus, dass bloß eine fallende Sekunde diesem Nachschlage am meisten zuwider ist. Die Ausführung dieses Exempels, D, mit Nachschlägen, werden wir im folgenden Paragraph bei Gelegenheit der punktierten Noten deutlich ersehen. Es ist indessen keine notwendige Schuldigkeit, bei diesem letzteren Exempel Nachschläge zu machen, wenn man nur den Triller gehörig aushält. So, Bach says when the notes are short, it rather, um, the, the, the Nachschlag rather suffers a directly ensuing ascending second more than a descending second. So even though these, this note isn't short at the beginning, you can see that there, there's a directly ensuing ascending second or, or steigende Sekunde. So the B flat makes the C a steigende Sekunde or an ascending second. Whereas if, if, if a, a directly ensuing fall in the seconda, which would be an A or descending second, that there the, the Nachschlag it doesn't suit the descending second or the fall in the seconda. And so you see in figure D, the first figure of that example D is the same as the opening figure in Mozart's sonata and so Bach says by a completely slow tempo and again what will be relevant here what that makes relevant is the length of the notes over which 
the trill is. That they suffer, that that suffers a nachschlag. And so he said, in paragraph 14, he says how this is to be performed. So you can see this opening figure is relevant to what Bach has said about how to perform a trill over a dotted note where a short ascending note or notes follow. And then when he says at the end that there's no, um, you're not obliged to do and play an after stroke or a turn with these trills, as long as one holds out the trill properly, what Bach will be referring to, I'd offer as a guess, is that when, you know, when the tempo is faster or the notes are shorter, that one doesn't, isn't killing oneself trying to add in a nachschlag because they think they have to. So when the, the shorter the notes become, there's not necessarily an obligation to add the nachschlag. One can, then the, the, the short notes following the dot can take the place of the nachschlag or after stroke. And here's paragraph seven from the chapter on trills. Die Triller sind die schwereste Manier. Allen wollen sie nicht gelingen. Man muss sie in der Jugend fleißig üben. Ihr Schlag muss vor allen Dingen gleich und geschwinde sein. Ein geschwinder Triller ist alle Zeit einem langsamen vorzuziehen. Bei traurigen Stücken könnte ein Triller allenfalls etwas langsamer geschlagen werden. Außerdem aber erhebt der Triller wenn er geschwind ist, einen Gedanken sehr. In der Stärke und Schwäche richtet man sich nach dem Gedanken, wobei er vorkommt. Es mag dieser Forte oder Piano vorgetragen werden. So I include that to show that, like in the case of paragraph 13, that does ex that example D, that the trills in those, even though Box talks about a completely slow tempo, he is still talking about a fast trill. And here's paragraph 17 from the chapter on trills. Ein mittelmäßig Ohr wird alle Zeit empfinden, wo der Nachschlag gemacht werden kann oder nicht. Ich habe dieses wenige, bloß Anfängern zu gefallen und, weil es hierher gehört, anführen müssen. So here's bar four in Mozart's Sonata, the B flat major. And this is paragraph 14 from the chapter on Appoggiaturas. Wenn die Vorschläge Tertien sprunge ausfühlen, so sind sie auch kurz. Bei dem Adagio aber ist der Ausdruck schmeichelnder wenn die Vorschläge bei diesem Exempel Figur 11a als Achtteile von einer Triole und nicht als, als Sechzehnteile gespielt werden. Bei B kann man die deutliche Einteilung lernen. Manchmal muss wegen gewisser Ursachen in einem Gesange die Resolution abgebrochen werden. All da muss der Vorschlag auch ganz kurz sein. Tab 4 C. Die Vorschläge vor den Triolen werden auch kurz abgefertigt, damit die Natur der Triole deutlich bleibe. D. Und widrigenfalls dieser Ausdruck mit dem bei E nicht verwirrt würde. Das 
wenn der Vorschlag die reine Oktave vom Basse hat, so kann er auch nicht lang sein, weil die Harmonie zu leer klingen würde, F. Bei der verkleinerten Oktave hingegen findet man ihn oft lang. So here in F, when the, when the appoggiatura has the perfect octave of the bass, it also can't be long because the harmony would, would sound too empty. And in bar four, you can see that it's a double appoggiatura that Mozart writes in, but one of those appoggiaturas is the perfect octave of the bass. So that box says can't be long, otherwise the harmony would sound too empty. And that as well can be considered in the corresponding bar 73. And I'll read the appendix to paragraph 14. Wenn bei einer Kadenz statt des Trillers ein Vorschlag gemacht wird, so wird letzter auch kurz. So what we have here is a cadence. The chord of five to one. And normally the trill would be over the E flat. If, Bach, if Mozart had written in, included a trill. But instead of the trill, he has an, an, an appoggiatura. So according to Bach, that appoggiatura would as well be short. And here's paragraph one from the chapter on trills. Die Triller beleben den Gesang und sind also unentbehrlich. Vor diesem brauchte man sie nicht like the air, als nach einem Vorschlage, Tab 4, Figur 22a, oder bei Wiederholung der vorigen Note, B. Im ersten Falle heißt man sie angeschlossene Triller. Heute zu Tage aber kommen sie bei gehenden, bei springenden Noten, gleich im Anfangen, oft hintereinander, bei Kadenzen, auch außerdem über langen Haltungen C, über Formaten D, bei den Einschnitten ohne vorhergegangenen Vorschlag E, auch noch solchem F4. Folglich ist diese Manier and yet so viel willkürlicher als Eadem. So what we have here in bar four is an example of the Einschnitt. And Bach is saying that the trill will come with the Einschnitt in, a, in the example E without a, a preceding appoggiatura. And as well after one. And so you can see there that there is the Einschnitt. And normally there over that E flat would be where the trill comes. And that Mozart instead of the trill has an appoggiatura. And I just want to say had Mozart written in a trill over that E flat together with that appoggiatura. Well then that appoggiatura would be long. But he didn't. The appoggiatura is there instead of the trill. And if one is completely accurate here, one would see that that cadence in bar four is a half cadence. And that the part of the Einschnitt character of the Einschnitt is the half cadence. Hmm. 
And here's paragraph 13 from the chapter on Apogeturus. Es ist ganz natürlich, dass die unveränderlichen kurzen Vorschläge am häufigsten bei kurzen Noten vorkommen. Figur 8a. Sie werden ein, zwei, dreimal oder noch öfter geschwänzt und so kurz abfert, abgefertigt, dass man kaum merkt, dass die folgende Note an ihrer Geltung etwas verliert. Dem ungeacht kommen sie auch vor langen Noten vor, zuweilen, wenn ein Ton einige Mal angeschlagen wird. B. Auch außerdem. C. Man findet sie ebenfalls vor den Einschnitten bei einer geschwinden Note, D, bei Rückungen, E, Bindungen, F, und bei Schleifungen, G. Die Natur dieser Noten bleibt dadurch unverletzt. Das Exempel bei H mit Vorschlägen von unten tut besser, wenn die Vorschläge als Achtteile gespielt werden. Übrigens müssen bei allen Exempeln über die kurzen Vorschläge diese letzten kurz bleiben, wenn auch die Exempel langsam gespielt werden. So, the short unchangeable appoggiatura will be occur with before the Einschnitt with a fast note. And what we have in bar four is the appoggiatura coming before the Einschnitt with a fast note. And, and, a, and a fast note can as well mean a short note. And just in the case of all the appoggiaturas here in this movement in Mozart Sonata, all the notes are short. And that is, most of them, or all, yeah, most of the notes that have an appoggiatura, they are tailed twice. So that means that, you know, and, and a, a, a quarter note or a crotchet has no tail, isn't tailed at all. Whereas an eight note or a quaver will be tailed once. So it has that little tail on at the top of it. And then a 16th note or a semi quaver will be tailed twice. So it has two of those tails on the top of it, if you imagine it written out. And a demi semi quaver will be tailed three times, or a 32nd note. Those appoggiaturas will be tailed three times. So you can see in this sonata that, that what Bach is saying that the short, unchangeable appoggiaturas will be tailed once, twice, three times, or more often, as they are here. Yeah, and, and, and so dispatched so short that one hardly men notices that the fol following note loses anything of its value. Yeah, so here it occurs before the Einschnitt on a fast note or a short note. And then that appoggiatura as well is short. So, so I'll look at, move on to bar seven. And this is paragraph six from the chapter on Appoggiaturas. Wir sehen zugleich aus dieser Figur, dass die Vorschläge die vorige Note zuweilen wiederholen, A, zuweilen auch nicht, B, und dass die folgende Note hinauf und herunter gehen und springen kann. So you'll see this. So Bach says the, the appoggiatura will sometimes repeat the preceding note. And you'll see this in that bar seven. That the appoggiatura is in fact repeating, the appoggiaturas are in fact repeating the previous note, the preceding note. 
And you'll also see this in bars 33, 47, 76 and 102. And then where the following note jumps, as Bach says in paragraph six, you'll see that in bars, you'll find that in bars 33 and 102. Then again, this is the appendix to paragraph 14 from the end of chapter on Apogiturus. And this is to do with the second Apogitura in bar seven. So, wenn bei einer Cadenz statt des Trillers ein Vorschlag gemacht wird, so wird letzter elk kurz. And what you find in, in bar seven, with that last appoggiatura and the figure, it comes, it's part of a cadence, a 5-1 cadence, going from the first subject into the transition period, where Mozart brings us to the, you know, second subject in the dominant key of F major. So what you have is a 5-7-1 cadence. And so what Bach adds, he doesn't, write in a trill there on that cadence he instead he adds an appoggiatura with two short notes with a short with a swift continuation then following so box says when the appoggiatura is is there instead of a trill and a cadence it's as well short <laughs> And that can as well be considered in bars 47 and 76. And this is paragraph 18 from the chapter on trills. In sehr geschwinder Zeitmasse kann man zuweilen durch Vorschläge die Ausnahme eines Trillers bequem bewerkstelligen. Figur 29. Dies, die letzten zwei kurzen Noten drücken als den den Nachschlag nicht übel aus. So in that figure 29, you can see two versions of trills with the Nachschlag that Bach demonstrates. And one is the regular Nachschlag, or after stroke, and the other is the descending Nachschlag or after stroke. And this is why I'm not happy with the, you know, the translation turn, the turn at the end of the trill, because a turn is, is not inclusive enough, it's too restrictive, because it, the turn only applies to the regular after stroke or Nachschlag. Whereas with a Nachschlag, one can mean also the the Nachschlag one sees in the second figure of that example, figure 29. And the turn can't be used then. So the turn is not a good replacement for the word Nachschlag or afterstroke because it doesn't include everything that the Nachschlag includes. Yeah, so you can see that second one is the same. That second figure in figure 29 is similar to that figure at the, at the end of bar seven in Mozart Sonata. And that the, tr the trill with, so, uh, with such a Nachschlag or afterstroke is, co often comes forward in Mozart. And one can see it in the in bars 58 and 60 of this sonata. So what this Bach is saying 
for this last figure that it can create the it can comfortably create the, the effect of a trill with a notch like and again you see it's in at a cadence in which case the appoggiatura would be short <laughs> And this is paragraph 9 from the chapter on Apogiturus. Außer dem, was wir im sechsten Paragraph gesehen haben, so kommen die Vorschläge von veränderlicher Geltung gemeiniglich vor. Bei gleichem Takte im Niederschlage, Figur 2a, und aufheben, b. Bei ungleichem Takte aber im Niederschlage alleine, Figur 3, alle Zeit für einer etwas langen Note. Man findet sie ferner für den Schlusstrillern, Figur 4a, für den halben Kadenzen, b, für den Einschnitten, c, für den Fermaten, d, und für der Schlussnote, nach e, und ohne vorhergegangenen Triller, F. Wir sehen bei dem Exempel E, dass nach dem Triller der Vorschlag von unten besser tut als der von oben. Deswegen würde der Fall bei G nicht gut klingen. Langsame, punktierte Noten vertragen diese Art von Vorschlägen ebenfalls, H. Wenn diese Art von Noten auch schon geschwänzt wären, so muss doch die Zeitmaß gemäßigt sein. So you'll see that a Poggiatura, that last Poggiatura in bar 7, comes neither on an upbeat nor a downbeat. And that can also be considered with regard to bars 29, 33, that first appoggiatura in 33, bars 47, 76, 98, and 102. In that figure 4b, Bach showed all the examples of the half cadences, and that last one is that half cadence where the, the top note does not land on the C. It's in C major, so it doesn't go to the C, it goes to the, to the E, so the third above the C. And that will be considered a half cadence. None of Lilliput knows that. And this is paragraph 21 from the chapter of the ornaments in general. Wir sehen also, dass die Manieren mehr bei langsamer und mäßiger als geschwinder Zeitmaß, mehr bei langen als kurzen Noten gebraucht werden. And here's the appendix the, to that paragraph. Besonders merke man, dass die Fälle wo der Gesang sich zu etwas gleichsam determiniert und wo man wenigstens einen ziemlichen, wo nicht vollgen Verstand oder Sensum hat, am liebsten die Manieren vertragen. Dahero finden wir diese Letztern am meisten bei halben und ganzen Schlüssen, bei Einschnitten und Formaten. Okay, I'll leave it there for now and I'll pick it up again in the next video. Thanks. Bye.